primary strategy for excellence and enjoyment encourages teachers to take ownership of their curriculum. One way of achieving this is to combine units into cross-curricular themed projects. But how do you begin to go about teaching in this different way? This program will look at how one school is taking its first steps in creating a new themed curriculum. Alice Ballantyne is a Year 3 teacher at Headley Park Primary School in Bristol. This term she's teaching a combined history and geography project named What Floats Your Boat, which was inspired by the city's rich maritime heritage. What Floats Your Boat is a project that is really looking at our, the sort of best of our local resources. We really wanted to do a project on the Vikings, so we looked at um, using the docks as being a key focus. The Vikings, obviously, um, one of the sort of key features of that unit is about um, the boats, the long ships, how they built it, how it allowed them to explore the world. And um, we have our own set of explorers from Bristol, and the SS Great Britain is another sort of great resource that we had by um, sort of putting a history and a geography learning objective together in the same lesson. We've made our learning a lot richer. Alice and the other staff of Headley Park were inspired by visiting other schools already teaching themed units, such as Harwood Infant School in Gloucester. One of the things that really um, amazed me in a way was these kids were really focused on what they were doing and there was a sort of a a buzz in the classrooms, a work-like buzz. Um, and I just felt, well, you know, if that's how it works, I'd like to give it a try here. One of the hardest parts for all of us engaged in this work is how to encourage people to take those first steps and be confident. I think if those steps are successful, the confidence starts to flow because it's quite evident from the work that the children do that this is working. And it would be seen to be working by somebody who came in on an inspection. Uh, it would be encouraged by somebody from an organisation like QCA where they want to develop uh, a curriculum that's relevant and appropriate for children in the 21st century. One of the things they learned from Harwood Infant School's approach was to trial some themed units before making wholesale changes to the curriculum. Doing this helped to reduce initial staff concerns about the workload involved, planning and assessing units. Staff, um, particularly younger staff, surprisingly, were, were quite cautious about it. And until they had got used to being able to combine all the subjects into a, a, a theme or a topic, we decided that, OK, don't, you know, just dip your toe in the water and see how it goes. So certainly some aspects of numeracy have to be taught separately. Some aspects of literacy are taught separately. However, teachers are saying to me, actually, if we do this theme again, we know better ways of integrating the subjects. So it isn't a hard and fast decision. It's what seems to work at the time. This is a long-term planning sheet and this is just a chance for us to block out all the subject areas, so block out the units in science and geography and history across the two years. We will teach, we might teach year three and year four units in conjunction with each other because they fit nicely. So for instance last term it was a very science heavy term, this term has been much more history and geography and then the next term will be science and geography. So we'll be, we, might, we might not have the same sort of um, balance of subjects across each term, depending on the topic. Oh, you can make it move. The detailed planning for such complex cross-curricular themed units is seen as best done by sharing the workload with other members of staff. It's been very useful to take it on as a whole school mm. because we've all felt sort of in the same boat with regards to our planning and assessment. And certainly I've found that really useful to work with much more experienced teachers on, on a project which is involving the whole school. It's been really, really useful. I mean, really, it's gone full circle to about where I started from. It was always topic-based when, I, when I first yeah, started I'm teaching. <laughs> we, we, we are that old, yeah. Um, but whereas before, if you were doing, say, a topic on dinosaurs, you just grabbed anything that linked with dinosaurs, however contrived it was, you've got to be very careful now that it actually is relevant to the topic. 
So that was the, the tricky bit, wasn't it? Not just saying, oh, we could do that, because that's yeah. linked with the topic. I think there was, a, uh, there was a temptation for me, because I've been teaching for, quite, for a long yeah. time now, to go straight back there and get the marker pens and the um, and the sugar paper yeah. out and just drop yeah. it top it web. But there is, there's so much you have to sort of bring in. There you go. Incorporated into each theme are memorable events known as wow experiences. <laughs> what Floats Your Boat has already included a trip to Bristol's docks, a visit from a real life Viking and this workshop, run by a professional architecture team, where pupils are building their own Viking longboat in the school hall. The WOW experiences give the children a chance to see their learning in action. Coming to school isn't just about sitting in a classroom and being told what to do. It, it gives them an idea, it gives them motivation to actually go beyond the classroom and to make links between outside of school and inside of school. The workshop was particularly good because it was designed as an integrated programme. So we looked at, in building it, we were looking at mathematical skills and, and DT skills. In putting the Viking ship together, we had to have some knowledge of what a Viking ship looked like, so we're looking at historical information. We used our geographical knowledge to sort of think about where they might be going. We used some drama skills. So in itself, it was a very nicely integrated package, um, which sort of reinforced all the things that we're trying to do here. Once the boat has been built, the class sets sail for far and distant lands, but must beware the icebergs. They needed someone to spot the icebergs. So Georgina, every now and again, is going to shout iceberg at the top of her voice. Becoming a Viking is a hazardous occupation, with those not keeping pace thrown overboard. Richard Martin is head teacher of Harwood Infants, one of the Gloucester schools Headley Park sought advice from. We asked him to look at the workshop and give his opinion on the learning experience. It's a good way of teachers putting together an experience for children to learn and to get from it, working together, having some feeling of what it's like to construct a boat, though I suspect that boat would have a job floating. Um, but it served the purpose in that particular activity. What might have been like to have been on the boat? Smells, what might it have smelt like on the boat, do you think? People might have died on there. People? Might have died on there. Oh, they might have done, absolutely. Yes, they might have died in there. Might have to kind of been thrown overboard like a few of you just a minute ago. So this has brought alive all of our learning, hasn't it? You are sitting in the ship. You are the Vikings, aren't you? Olaf and Eric and all those people you've been writing about. This workshop did involve a cost, but there are lots of local resources that can be used to create these memorable events. What an exciting morning we had, children. Teaching using a theme grants flexibility in Alice's timetable, allowing her to expand on activities so which demand more time here, without the worry up, of squeezing so everything into a set lesson. First thing after lunch, Alice uses some of this extra time to review the longboat experience, asking the children to brainstorm some cross-curricular links. How does what we did this morning link to our learning? It was linking because we made a boat out of the materials. Excellent. OK, so excellent. We got the longships. We were making a longship out of those materials that links us with our boats. What else does it link us with, then? Links us with the boats, but what else does it link us with? The Vikings. Thank you, the Vikings. That's quite a big one, isn't it? We have certain subjects set in stone. Uh, our setting work, for instance, our we have to do it at certain times in order to get the sort of support from other members of staff. And within the rest of the timetable, we are we can be as free as we want. So we can we mostly do our literacy work during the same kind of time each week, usually before lunch. So it's not different that different to how we used to do it. But it does mean that we could leave what we did before lunch and carry on with it after lunch if we wanted to. So we're a lot freer in our timetable. We've got you know whatever time isn't designated as PE, ICT, or set work. It's kind of our own to play around with. 
What we're going to do, what we're learning to do this afternoon is we're reviewing and reflecting on our morning's activities. And the way that we're going to do that is to produce a mind map of how our architecture workshop fits in with our project. And we've looked at that already. We're going to draw a picture of you in the Viking longship. It hasn't felt like a big risk to do what we're doing. So what it's felt think? exciting, it's felt daunting, calls, and it's at times been quite exhausting. Me, but it hasn't felt like a and risk. It feels like the right thing to do for the children. The children have really taken it on in a very enthusiastic way. We're relying on their sort of independent research skills a lot of the time. And it's a chance for certainly children in our age group, year three and four, to really develop those research skills. So they've really taken it on because they've been able to. They've given the skill, they've been able to look at the content in a slightly different way. Well, when we do our projects, and we do, it's everything involved, but when we do lessons that aren't to do with the project, it can be about almost anything. I like the projects because it's more fun than math and English, and colouring in the projects as well. Do you get to, like, do new stuff and, and to, like, and you can, like, you can talk it out and stuff? I like the project work because it's really fun um, the wow experiences and going on trips and things. And I don't like the this, this things because it takes up most of our time doing it. Response from the children and the response from the, the staff in the school suggests that it's working for them. And it's at that stage they then need to start making decisions about do we keep this exactly as it is? Do we extend it? Do we draw back? And it's essential that any school that wants to develop working in this way has to go through those stages, the thoughtful stages, the research, the strategy, the implementation, but then vital at that point is to make judgments about is this working, is it better? I can't see teachers certainly wanting to go back to the way they were teaching before. Uh, so I think it will continue. I think it'll also improve because as they do the topic the next time, they'll build on what they learnt. This piece of work will go in our project book to remind us of the experience we've had today. Now, I want to have a quick discussion and see if there's anybody <coughs> who has created a link in their learning. For the, um, on materials, for the SS Great Britain, I put metal and iron. Iron, it was the kind of material that they used to make it, didn't they? Did you do that as well? Oh, not unique, but a nice idea. I thought of pretending there was real icebergs and it was linked to my using my imagination. Good. Now that Alice has been teaching themed units for a year, what are her views on this approach? What I've found in the last year, although it's been quite high pressure and quite hard work, it's been very liberating in terms of my teaching and in terms of the children's learning. So I'm, I'm very happy to stay with what we've got. Developing this sort of work, the, the very closely structured planning that underpins it is very arduous, it's very time consuming, but I think for teachers who um, get involved in this sort of work, there's a real fulfillment. They really feel that it's making a difference to the lives of young people, but also making a difference to their lives. Thank you.